On this pool, we see a lot of bubbles coming into the pool. The pool is cloudy, doesn't seem to get clean. The pool sweeper moves for a little bit, then it stops. So what this means is somewhere between the pool sweeper and the pump, there is an air leak. So of course, we've got to check a few things. You can take a measurement just using the flow meter to detect whether the leak is after the weir or before the weir. As you can see, the flow is way below the minimum, meaning it's not enough to get that pool sweeper to move around the pool. When measuring the flow, just make sure that that vent is either closed or removed. Otherwise, it will circumvent your flow measurement. An air leak can also be caused from the wagon wheel seal by the selector switch. Also check the top of your filter, make sure there's no leak coming from there. Check the pipes that are feeding into your system. Check all the joints. On the motor, there are also some important parts that need to be checked. Check the mechanical shaft seal, also the O-ring. Inside, there's an impeller. Check the condition of the impeller and also an additional O-ring. After checking all the last causes of an air leak, unfortunately, one has to do the final check and that is the piping from the pool filter to the pool. Now I'm over here at the pool side by the weir. We've had to dig up the paving and the dirt to get to the pipes. The pipes run all the way to the filter. And then in the distance one can see the pump and the filter. So with the pump on, we check all the joints one by one. We check if there's any whistling, we check if there's any leak when we switch it off, is there any water that is flowing back out of the pipe? So we check all these joints. The only way to check these joints is if you open up the ground. Now, interestingly, the pipes are headed towards the left of the screen, which means it goes under this outside building. This is called a LARPA. And then there at the back, it's like it takes a turn towards the pool filter. So what we suspect is that in this case, the person who built this LARPA decided to move the water filter in order to make space for the LARPA, and therefore we can see the pipes do not go in a straight line. Although the pipe runs in this direction, we are going to turn and we are going to run directly to the pump because there is the pump. So we are obviously going to run new pipes. Now, of course, since the pipe runs under the structure, it's very difficult to check that pipe. So there comes the pipe from underneath the structure and there it goes to the pool pump. Now, the fault of this pool is it seems to be sucking in air. Now, over here, we have this strange join. Firstly, the pipe is thinner there. Secondly, they've used these metal clamps. Notice that this clamp has actually rusted and the head of the clamp has come off. So it is no longer tight. I can already see there's some movement here over there. And when we were digging here, we noticed some off cuts that the previous installers had left. And this is actually the wrong pipe. This is a plumbing pipe, a waste pipe, a gravity pipe, rather than a high pressure pipe. So that's also incorrect. And these joins are a little bit suspicious in my opinion. So we find that there is an air leak here. And then afterwards, when you switch it off, we can see there is a water leak. Of course, because then the water can flow out of here because there's an air leak. And when you switch the pump off, then it's no longer sucking. And then suddenly there comes the water. It is now dripping. So we have found the problem. The problem is they have made an incorrect join here. And secondly, they are using the wrong types of pipes. And following the pipe all the way towards the filter, we can see that this elbow over here is not the correct elbow. It is not a high pressure elbow. This is a normal gravity feed plumbing elbow rather than a high pressure elbow. So we can see that somebody has moved this whole setup and used the incorrect spares for a pool installation. They have also run these wires just loosely in the ground without putting them in a protective conduit or using a shielded cable. So that is also incorrect. Right, we are going to replace both pipes because unfortunately the pipe underneath is also a plumbing pipe. That's just a waste pipe. It should be a high pressure pipe. Now we are going to divert and go towards the pool filter running brand new pipes. But we are going to use this section of pipe because we've opened the ground and we've checked that the pipes are still in very good order. How do we know these pipes are good? Well, I can check that the thickness of the pipe is correct. Firstly, because we located one of the black pipes and off cut, we can see it is very thick. And this is a high pressure pipe and we're happy with this one. The white one is also thick. Obviously when we cut it we'll do a final assessment. These were the original pipes with the people who originally installed this pool. So that means that we are going to cut the pipes here and then run our own brand new pipes all the way to the pool filter in a more direct manner. All right so the water level is above the pipe here and this is the jet which pushes the water back into the pool. Now if we don't block it off water is just going to flow back so either we'll have to let the pool go below this or we can block it off. Of course, I can put an elbow here and then another pipe above the water level. Or if you've got a plastic bag, you can put it over it with an elastic. And I'm just putting a second one on here. So they've covered the jet with plastic and an elastic. Water cannot flow into that pipe. Now here by the weir, the pipe going in doesn't have a nice thing for me to block it with. Now, you could fold up some rags and put it there. Just make sure the rag does not get in the pipe. If you've got some window putty, you can use that. So I'm going to take some window putty 
make it into a nice clump and I'm going to block that pipe on the inside here. The putty is inside the weir and I can leave it for a couple of hours because putty takes days if not weeks to actually harden. Right, set this to closed. So since we're running brand new pipes, I'm going to remove this. This is a very old style of pipe and I'm going to change it with that. Then I'm going to have an elbow right here. So it's going to be like that. So I can effectively just remove this now. And just by the way, it is actually leaking here. It is all wet there. So this is a good time to fix all these little faults one by one. Right, this is a union. So I can just remove this part. And now I can get access to this side here. So we're now cutting the pipe that's coming from the weir. There should only be a little bit of water because it's been blocked off with the putty. This is just the water that's left in the pipe. We're starting on the pool filter side. So now we've cut the pipe, we're gonna now remove it. All right, so now we're just opening the channel here. We're just gonna get the other pipe out. We're replacing all the pipes because these are the wrong pipes and also there are leaks. We are right here by the filter, but we are removing the entire pipe and guess what? There is another join hidden in the ground and this is why it's very important to replace a pipe from start to finish and it's leaking. You can see some water underneath there. Yes, this is the a pipe that is pushing the water back in the pool, but still it's going to waste water if we don't replace this pipe. All right, so the pipes have been removed. Now we are just uh, opening the channel so that we can put the new pipes. All right, so we're going to start here. I need to release this. This is very tight. So I've just cut there and now I can remove this piece here. And I just need to get this out. Right, so this is going to go in here. So it just needs the plumber's tape. Right, so I'm just going to put the plumber's tape on. So I start at the edge there. There must be nothing blocking there. And now I can thread this. Now from here, this is going to be a 90 degree. And then I'm going to put the pipe. And that pipe is going to go into the pipe on the floor there. I'm not gluing anything yet, I'm just getting the measurements. Now over here, I'm going to put the other side of this union, which is going to go over here, and I'm just holding it in place for now. Right, so nothing's been glued yet, we're just going to get all the alignments and the lens done. Now we're just holding it in place with some bricks so the pipes don't move. Alright, so starting at the pool pump, there are the fittings directly to the motor and the filter. We're going to use two 45 degree bends there. We're going to use two couplers here for the two pipes. Now we've cut this black pipe. So we've checked the remainder of the pipes and on that part it's fine. All right, so this pipe, this is the pipe going to push water back in the pool. We're going to use this fitting over here because this is going to be a mechanical join. We can't glue onto this pipe because this is a different material. This is PVC. So on this side, we're just going to use this fitting over here. And then this is going to go straight to one of these PVC pipes. We're just going to see which one it is that comes from the filter. Now this black pipe, as you can see, it's flexible. So it's going to be easy. We're just going to join straight onto the white pipe. Now the remaining PVC pipe, this is the pipe that's going to be sucking. Now this doesn't have that much flexibility. So we are going to use a 45 degree over there, a piece of pipe, and then a 45 degree like that. So now that we've planned the route, we can now start gluing on the pump side. Right, so we've checked the whole route, the route is fine. So now we're going to glue everything. Right, so we must use a high pressure PVC cement. I have rubbing alcohol and a cloth. I spray the rubbing alcohol into the fitting. I wipe it clean and I make sure it's dry. I do the same on the pipe side. I apply the cement on the plastic pipe, on the PVC pipe, and then on the inside of the fitting, all the way in. Now I see this deeply inside, it's all the way in. I can see it there on the end there. Now before the glue dries, we want to make sure that this is vertical because we don't want to have an angle. It will put unnecessary stress on this union. Right, so we just put a brick there to give it support. We've tightened the union to make sure that this is vertical. And now the same process for the other side. Make sure it is completely dry. That's why I use alcohol. It removes any water. When gluing the two pieces, just press it in. Don't twist it. So I press, 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 all the way till it comes to define stop. Check inside. Check that it has gone all the way in, which it has. And that's it. Now I'm first going to glue that side because the pipe can move, but this is a fixed side. So I first glue this side.
Right, so we've done these two bends. We've extended the one pipe so that the bend happens later, which puts less pressure on the pipe. Notice the bricks stop the pipe from shifting. And there we use bricks so that when we glue the next joint, it does not interfere with this joint. So it doesn't put pressure on this joint. Now we are joining this PVC pipe to this one and we need to use a mechanical fitting. Right, so that means that we're going to go, this is going to glue on to the PVC. This is threads, so we're going to use the tape there. And, but this must be inside here. Fortunately, this pipe can be bent, so we can bend it back before we put this on. So we are going to start on this side. We're going to line up the pipes and we're going to work out how much the space needs to be. So there the joint is compacted. And the reason we compact the joint is when I wiggle it, here I'm wiggling the pipe, it doesn't move. Now I'm working on this part of the pipe. We need to get this inside here. We're going to cut this pipe, and then we're just going to push this one back. This one is flexible, so we've got space to push it back. Right, so I'm just cleaning it with the alcohol. Cleaning inside here, drying it. It is actually dry. Now this fitting, I'll also just clean it. Before putting this in here, make this wet. So we want to keep this wet and press it in here all the way. This is a mechanical joint, so I need to use these clamps to hold it in place. Right, I'll put two clamps on there that will hold it in place, but already it will be water and airtight. Now we need to put this on here, but we need to use the plumber's tape. And then I put extra towards the back. None of the plumber's tape is blocking the front. I make sure this is clean. There's no sediment on any of these threads. And now I can turn this. Right, so I'm lining the pipes up and I'm just going to cut this one exactly where it should be because this needs to seat in right there. So I'm just going to cut it now. The black pipe is an HDPE pipe and unfortunately we can't glue it. The glue doesn't bind to that material. We have to use a clamp, a mechanical fitting on the one side and then we can glue onto the PVC pipe. So on the PVC side is the glue and on the HDPE, the high density polyethylene pipe, we use the clamp. It's all the way in. Right, now we are going to do the top pipe and this is the pipe that's the sucking pipe. Note the use of the bricks helps align the pipes. Right, so this is the pipe from the pool. Then we are going to put a 45, a piece, and then we are going to cut this pipe, which is coming from the joint which we just did. We're going to go like this. It's better to use 45 than to do a 90. Of course, a 90 would be easier to do, but there's a lot more friction on these joints. So always try and use a 45 where possible. So now we're going to just see if this can line up. Yes. All right, so there is the join. Notice that we use the 45s. Try not to use 90 degrees because it increases the friction. And then the pump has to work harder and obviously you're going to waste electricity. All right, so we need to leave this for 24 hours because the cement needs to bond. It's a chemical bond. It's not just a glue. It actually bonds the plastic and that needs 24 hours. All right, over here we did have to make a change. It was like this. And what we noticed is, believe it or not, this fitting over here is not the same as this one. So even though this is a union, the old one is much longer. So so what happens is it's getting to the end here before this is tight on the union. So we had to quickly just cut here and glue this. I would have preferred to have changed the whole thing, but I don't have stock of this fitting right now and we still need to get the job done. We need to leave this for 24 hours now. All right, it's now been 24 hours. Now we can open this. Water can flow inside there nicely. I can remove this putty plug now. I just put the basket back. All right, I've just set that to waste for now because there's a bit of sand in the pipe and I don't want to clog up the sand filter unnecessarily. Now, because we emptied this, we might find that uh, there's not going to be any water that's going to suck in here. So I'm just going to fill this up manually to help the pump. Otherwise, it, would, it could take quite a long time. And it's a good opportunity to just clean this out. So I'm just taking the hose pipe and I'm filling that up. And what that's doing is it's going to fill up the pipe, actually. And by filling up the pipe, then it will allow me to suck the water back in. Otherwise, it's just air in the pipe. Right, and if you go check by the weir, you should see some air bubbles. As the water displaces the air, then it will allow for me to reverse this process. Right, I've kept this in for like half a minute. It's enough to fill up the pipe. I can see at the weir some air bubbles and water is now coming out at the weir. And just check the condition of the seal. It's still got a profile. I clean the surface here and I can return this. Right, I'm going to switch it on and let it run to waste just for like 10 seconds. All right, that's flushed the pipe already. So now I can turn that off. Now I can set this to filter and I can turn it on. Don't be alarmed if you see some air initially. Remember, there's quite a lot of air in the system and, and the air has to get out. 
There are quite a lot of termites here. Right, I'm going to do a flow check. Just remember to insert this thing. I'm going to set this at the maximum for now because I'm assuming there's no leaks. So that means that this can open quite easily. This is a pressure release. And if it's at the minimum, it's actually the most difficult to open this, which means maximum pressure. But if I release this and take it to the maximum position, that means much easier. So it's releasing a spring in there. So I'm going to do the flow check with this thing at the maximum. All right, so now I can take my hand and slowly close that vent. So I'm closing it and notice, look at that. Wow, no leaks. Check that. I can set the maximum flow. I'm setting it. There it is. And then we can see a complete change. Now the system is airtight. When it's under pressure like this, then I want to go and check the pipes if there are leaks. I'm now going to insert the pull sweeper back in. Right, so that valve is actually quite open, so there's still quite a lot of sucking power available, even though I have not closed that fully. No more air bubbles. In fact, that stream is actually a lot stronger. And there goes the sweeper. Look, it's doing a great job now. It's finally sweeping the pool, because now it's got that full sucking power. And on this type of filter, notice when I switch it off, notice how the filter depresses a bit, goes down a bit. If you can, leave the piping open for a day. Check all the joints to see there is no water or air whistling. We can now remove all these bricks. And there is the full run for this installation. Unfortunately, these can rust. They are galvanized steel, but they can still rust, especially if there's going to be water here. Once you've inspected the joint, you can see there are no leaks here at all, no air at all. Then you can just spray it with a primer, specifically on that. And the reason why is when you tighten it, it scratches into the galvanized steel, and that's an opportunity for corrosion, and that's where the rust starts. You can also use an epoxy to cover that. I'm just using a primer. All right, we've removed all the bricks. The pipes are now free to move. We noticed quite a lot of termites in this trench. So we are just going to put some poison in here. I'm just gonna use this carburel. And we're just gonna sprinkle some along the pipe's route just to protect the pipe from the termites. You can also coat the pipe with an anti-termite toxin. It is quite rare for termites to eat into the pipe. We're just gonna spread some of these pellets along the way. Then we will close up the trench. Of course, the owner of this property will have to do a proper termite treatment. We're just doing an intermediary treatment just to protect this pipe. And when we close up the pipe, we just make sure there's no wood or anything that termites eat. That'll aid the termite infestation. We don't want to aid it. And while we're closing, we're just adding some of the termite poison along the route. It's good practice to just put something underneath the pipes just to support them because when we load it with the sand, it's going to put unnecessary pressure on the pipes. It's going to be pulling the pipes down. So we just wedge the stones underneath so that when we put the sand, it doesn't pull the pipes downwards because obviously we're still going to pave. You don't want that pressure on the piping system. All right, so let it run for a couple of hours. If possible, leave it for a day, come back, switch it on the following day, check if there are any leaks, and then close up. In this case, we had to repave the area where we dug up. Here are some pictures of the paving which was closed up. And of course, once the suction is back to normal, the pool will clear up very quickly and you'll get your nice blue pool again. Okay, to sum up, the problems were they used the wrong pipes. These are plumbing pipes, they are thinner. For example, these are the correct pipes. It is a class six pipe, which means it can handle six bars. The pipes that they were using are these. These are just regular plumbing pipes, which are not high pressure pipes. They also had unnecessary joints. This is a PVC pipe, this is a PVC pipe. This should have just been joined with PVC, but instead they use clamps, which obviously rusted. There's nothing wrong with the clamps. It's just that this is an unnecessary join. We already had the PVC. Why go from PVC to HDPE? All right, wishing you the best with your installation. Thanks for watching and cheers.